For as long as I can remember, I've wanted to serve my country. My generation more than ever needs ordinary men to do extraordinary things. I heard it said that one person can't make a difference against terrorism, but I wanted to prove them wrong. It takes patience to learn everything that you need to, and all you want to do is be in the field. I never knew how much endurance it would take to just simply wait. I figured battle would be hard enough. They told us our enemy wouldn't hesitate to put us on the ground. We had to be prepared to do the same. I never thought I'd get through the initial training. But when I did, I felt like I could do anything, face anything. Badger 2-1, this is Keeper. We are seeing enemy movement about a half a click north of your pause. Advise you to proceed to secondary extract, copy. Okay, for one one, this is Badger. I need immediate extraction. LZ is. Ooh. Sir, can you tell me your name? Do you know where you are, sir? Set up for chest tube in 20 Does centimeters. Does he have a liver sucking. laceration? Give me some more light here. I need to He's see this. He's losing too much blood. Sir, stay with me here. Stay with me. When I was overseas, I didn't think about home very much. All I could focus on was fighting the enemy. Coming back was a lot like getting out of prison. The outside world had changed, but somehow I had to be a part of it again. I had wanted to serve in the special forces for years, but I felt like I trained so hard to do so little. People around me seemed friendly enough, but somehow that made me feel worse. I didn't do enough to protect them. They wouldn't understand. How could they? So much of my life had been fast-paced up until then. It was so strange living without orders to follow without something to fight for. I hated seeing what was going on in the world without being able to help. I hope my friends could make a difference even if I couldn't. My saving grace came when an old friend of mine found out I was back and wanted to offer me a job. He worked for a private military company called Blue Tower. I heard they mainly dealt in security and weapons manufacturing, but he told me they also specialized in covert operations. He said he could get me an entry-level position. It wasn't much, but it was something to help me get off the ground. And besides, in some small way, I'd be serving my country. I hoped so, anyway. Checkpoint three, go ahead. Just making sure you're still alive down there, Brody. Yep, I'm uh, having a real busy day down here. How about you? Oh, uh, you know, me and the boys are having a party up here. Well, it's too bad we can't get the same break. I'd come join you. I feel sad for you being all alone down there, buddy. Hey, that's not true. I think I saw a rat just a second ago. Listen, you boys have fun up there, all right? Call me if there's a real emergency, over and out. You miss me already, sweetheart? Mr. Brody, this is Cassandra Reed from the executive floor. Director Thompson would like to speak with you right away. Yes, ma'am, I'll be right up. Admiring the view? Have a seat, Brody. How's the arm? Much better, ma'am. Thank you. Listen, something's come up and we might have a new job for you. I know you served in special ops and this particular assignment is much more in your line of work. 
What's the objective? Safe transport of a high-profile prisoner. Private sanction, small team. Everything you need to know is right here. Unless you prefer the security job. You'll be assisting an experienced team. All of you will be escorting the prisoner to a secure location. I assume you know Daniel Taylor? Former American commander. He was a brilliant officer from what I heard. And he'll be telling us everything he knows to avoid execution. Agent Mitchell will be leading the assignment. He's a hard ass. I wouldn't get on his bad side. Uh, yeah, no, I heard you. Sure. Yeah, it's just giving me a great big pain in the ass. Uh, I'd rather pour molten lead down my throat. Yeah. When you come crawling back sooner or later, I'm going to say that I told you so. Okay? Uh, my director's here, so excuse me. Brody, this is Greg Mitchell, Director of Field Operations. I see you every day when I come in, don't I? No, that's somebody else, but we wear the same shirt. <laughs> is that supposed to be a joke? I'm sorry to hear about Carlson. I'm sure he'll be back on his feet soon enough. Yeah, no, I'm sure he will, and everything will be all right. Yes, but you're a man short, and I'm sending Brody with you. Well, with all due respect, I think we got Taylor all covered with my team, and the way things are, maybe Mr. Security Guard here can stay and hold down the fort. Mitchell, Brody's not new, okay? He's done several tours in Afghanistan and has the battle scars to prove it. So do me a favor, make friends. All right. Well, Mr. Security Guard, Taylor's in holding room three, so I'm getting tired of talking to him myself. Why don't you go brief him? Try not to piss your pants. Who are you? Jim Brody, part of your transport. Pretty soon we're gonna be moving to a private airport. From there you'll be transferred to a secure government facility and that's where you'll serve out the remainder of your sentence. You mean my life? That's right. You're new, aren't you? We'll be moving soon. Sure it won't take you too long to gather all your personal effects. You get a light. Nice. It's a reminder that I quit. Good man. Better man than Mitchell, anyway. I thought it'd be him when you came in. He's a real bastard. You know, maybe he doesn't like interacting with traitors. You don't know anything about me, do you? I read your file. That's all I need to know. I was captured by the Taliban. And instead of torturing me or beheading me like I thought they would, they offered me a job. They courted me. I thought it was the most flattering thing in the world to be desired by my enemy. And since they're well aware that money is the only motivation this country understands, their offer was pretty flattering as well. And now both sides want you dead. Can't win every gamble. We leave in 20 minutes. Hey. Tell Mitchell I said hi. Mitchell? Hey, Paul. Everything's all set. We're ready when you are. This is Brody. He's the new guy. Yeah, right. Carlson's replacement. <laughs> Don't worry, Trooper boy. It's gonna be a breeze. Wait. Don't step there. Landmine. <laughs> Funny. Spoken like someone who never had to avoid one. What did you say to me? All right, you guys, get over it. Get on board, Brody. Where'd you find this guy? I was overruled.
Took a few hits on the job, huh? Yeah. yeah. Some guys weren't so lucky. I was over there three years. Pakistan border. Fifteen of my friends didn't make it. Friends I had for a real long time. You know who gave away our position? He's sitting right up there. That man deserves to die, Brody. Instead, he's just gonna live out his life in some minimum security prison, some some place by the beach, probably. Let me ask you a question. If it was up to you about him, what do you think? Life or death? I don't know. All I know is I have my orders. You know, somehow I just, uh, I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Mitchell? Spoken like a true soldier. All right, get him ready. We gave you a chance to join us, and you blew it. The engines of the radio are taken care of. What are you doing with Taylor? We're gonna give him what he deserves. Sometimes God doesn't smite the evildoer, so you gotta do the smiting yourself. I wasn't talking to you. No matter what you do to me, I'll still see you in hell. Maybe that's where we both belong. Question him. He's got a lot of information. Could save American lives. Why don't you let me finish what I started? Why don't you let me have some justice for my men? He'll get justice, Mitchell. And so will you. You have it your way, but you're gonna have to shoot me. Go ahead, Brody. Pull it. Don't do it! I'm not your enemy right now, Brody. Your country needs information that I have right now. I'm on your side. You're not on my side, Taylor. But 
I wish you were. The hardest thing I've ever had to do was kill a fellow soldier. But the decision I made in that split second was the difference between losing my way and keeping it. I wanted to hate Taylor as well. Maybe a part of me did. Even as a soldier in war, I had never seen someone more deserving of death. But I realized this might not be the last time I encountered a hateful person who was maybe getting off light. This wouldn't be the last time I might empathize with vigilante justice. So I decided not to think of myself more highly than I already did. I didn't want to make the same mistake of thinking I was incorruptible. I didn't want to follow the path that Mitchell took. Not that I'm any better than he was. I just want to be driven by something better. That's when I knew I was ready to lead. When I saw where I wasn't strong. The world has plenty of strength in it, just not in the right places. That's what I wanted to change if I could. I was going to start with myself. Thank you.